four years in the making I have been dreaming about this reef and sampling it. This is the vein and as you can see we've got all kinds of geology that is beyond my expertise to explain to you. All I can say is that it looks pretty damn good. And this is what some of that all looks like fresh out of the face. This is the part that was exposed to the air and once we cracked it open that is what we managed to pull out of it. It looks pretty damn tasty to me. Now we don't have over much of a sample in our bucket but probably enough to tell us if it's worth coming back and getting more the chicken. yes good girl I got a pocket full of chicken I just want to introduce you guys to the sound of my people yeah because this is an open but collapsed adit and we've got a lot of their rock they threw out of this hole, there's a chance that maybe they threw a piece of gold out onto the side. So we're just gonna quickly go over it with the SDC before we take the ore home and crush it up. No, it's not so safe. It's not, it's not that bad, dude. Yeah. Like honestly, who the hell wears skinny jeans prospecting? Yes. I've never been up here before. And there's a bit of Chinese porcelain sticking out of this mullet pile. Just throw my $4,000 detector on the ground like it doesn't matter, who cares? Ah! Look at that! Now that's, that's the kind of relics we like finding out here, because when you find this, it just it shows you what the people were doing, right? So clearly someone threw a plate into this mullet pile because they'd, they'd had enough food for the day, and they were never coming back here again because there was no gold. <laughs> Holy hell is the sound from this detector incredibly annoying. I mean, the threshold sound on the GPX 6000 is okay, but this is a nightmare. Now I forgot my pick, so all I have is my uh, Freddy Krueger claw. That feels and looks like steel. I hate it when I detect my shoe. I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm wearing shoes. I spent the next 22 minutes detecting the side of that hill, which is approximately the same length as an episode of Brooklyn Nine-Nine. If I'd watched that show instead of doing this, I probably would have had some amazing Terry Crews quotes stuck in my head, as opposed to the sound of the wailing wand. I don't, I don't think we're going to find anything. You going to help Fern? No, you're going. All right, bye. Yes, this is my absolutely trash garage. It needs, it needs a lot of work, but I have our beautiful bucket of ore right here and we're going to take some of the smaller pieces and crush them up in my dolly pot before we run the rest through the RC1 crusher in the morning. If you don't have your very own dolly pot at home, you can go to a local hardware store and pick up one of these. They cost $12 and it's nothing more than a star picket driver. The only other thing you need is a steel bar. First things first, we're going to hunt out pieces of ore that will fit into our dolly pot. Manually crushing, this is going to take me probably an hour, so that's more than enough. See all that dirt down the bottom? I want to classify that out because some of this real fine dirt, like this, will be easy to process down. This is not all the dirt out of the bucket, but a very large percentage of it. Now that I've got a small sample of soil, I'm going to use the rest of my classifiers which range from 20 down to 50 mesh. I want every single thing that goes through this pan to be under 50 mesh because we're dealing with free mill gold, which is incredibly fine. This would literally take seconds in the RC1 crusher, but I can't start that bad boy up at 7.30 at night. First, this is all out plus 20 mesh. Ooh, that reduced it by heat. 
All right, we're just gonna keep repeating this process till it's all under 50 mesh. Any gold at all will give us a good indicator that we're gonna get some more when we crush up the entire sample of ore we took. Practically dissolved to nothing. I don't even think I need to pan that down. If we see any gold in here, it is going to be super fine. But this is what it washed down to by me just putting it in the water. So we've got a little bit there, but I haven't even, I haven't even washed any off. Oh my god, look at that. That is a tail of gold. As I said, it's super fine and it might be hard to see this light because I've got a yellow light globe above me. But all of that just there is gold and that's just from the dust in the bucket. After what I can describe as a very, very exciting turn of events, I've gone ahead and actually crushed down probably, I don't know, 100 grams or so worth of that. So ore. obviously with ore, you really want to stratify it. The gold usually comes out so fine. Let's pan that bad boy down. Okay, any gold in here at all is going to be good because it was such a small sample. So even if we don't get any, it doesn't mean that there isn't going to be good gold in that face. We need to do a larger sample. What? Oh my god, look at that. They're actual, they're actual flakes. They're like legitimate pieces of gold. That is really good. Three days later. It's about to absolutely dump rain and it's been like this for a week, so I've got to get this done now. It's going to be real quick. I've got the Keen RC1 Rock Crusher all set up, ready to go. And this is our ore. All I've done is broke it down into one inch or minus pieces. That's the first pass. We're gonna take it all out and run it again. Two passes in under five minutes and it's got it down to absolute powder. Now we're finally gonna see what's in that wall. All right, take the mask off for five seconds. <laughs> I just wanted to quickly mention something about the results I got from Wednesday night sample that you just saw me crush up, and that is contamination. Unfortunately, there was a little bit of contamination in that sample that I got from my screens. I did a video where I cleaned up five ounces of gold and I used those screens to do it. And whilst I did clean the screens afterwards, I clearly missed some because under a loop, some of the gold was alluvial and not load gold, but there was a percentage of load gold. So we're unsure at this stage if there's going to be gold in this dirt. I got really excited last night and now I'm not so sure. We're just going to do this in a little pan, one scoop at a time, one big scoop, but one scoop at a time. Even though we're just about to pan this and make it all wet and safe, you still got to put a dust mask on because this stuff is super toxic to your lungs and your health and it causes cancer and all sorts of crap. And just scooping it from the bucket into the pan is dangerous. <laughs> So I'm only going to check this first scoop for gold and then we're going to pan the whole bucket and at the end do a single reveal. I just want to know if we've got any kind of colour in here. So we're expecting a lot of fine gold. Obviously this rock could be broken down a little bit more, but for two passes we've got it pretty good. Hmm, sulfides. And possibly one speck of gold up here. 2,000 years later. This is it. The entire bucket is now in the pan. So we're going to get this down. And then we're going to find out if we got gold. And if we got gold, how much. And that's going to decide whether or not I go back there and get more. So we've got dirty water and a lot of larger rocks. All of this obviously needs to go through again to get broken down properly, uh, but we save all of our concentrates to run through the ball mill. Now, any gold means that it's a load bearing reef and it could get richer at any point. We can continue sampling. So spin it back, find out. All right, we do have gold. It is very fine though, very fine. All of that stuff up there is gold, but we're talking 100 mesh, 100 mesh minus probably. 
So nowhere near as much as what I thought we were going to get after last night's sample, and that is the problem with contamination.